can't stop the noise that's inside my head. Welcome to today's vlog. We are in Gdansk, Poland. And in today's video, we're gonna really focus on two historic moments during the 20th century in this city. First of all, it is the start of World War II that started here. And then later on, we're going to go all the way to the 1980s. And that is when the Solidarity Movement took place. On the 1st of September, 1939, at 4.45 a.m., a German battleship bombarded Westerplatte. And this is the memorial put in place as a significant reminder of that event. When the attack happened, the Poles were under-equipped and didn't have many troops at all because they had 180 soldiers stationed here. They were only expected to last and hold off the Germans for a few hours. But in fact, they actually held them off for seven days. The troops stationed here were cut off from the main body of the Polish military. That meant they were pretty much on their own. They had to sustain troop attacks, air raids and bombardments all on their own. But the one thing they did have was an interesting form of defence. They actually used smoke to deter the Germans from where they were and confuse them. And it worked really well to make them hold off for such a, such a substantial period. With the difficulty the Germans were having, they made use of loudspeakers and they broadcast this propaganda to try and get the Poles to surrender. Although the attack on the 1st of September was a surprise, they had been preparing the area for some time. Because of its position on the Baltic, they suspected this would be the area attacked first. In the year before the war, they moved all the families of the Polish government out of the area in preparation for war. Westerplatte is not just the first location for World War II. It is the first location of resistance against the German Nazis in Europe. Now, for Poles, this is a memory of the strength and resilience they have as a nation. A quick pit stop, we had to go to a bakery and for 31 zlotych or six pounds, we have got, uh, that's mascarpone with a meringue, a donut, this pastry, a Pepsi Max, actually that's no, just Pepsi, and a hot chocolate, ridiculously cheap, but Polish baker, baked goods are the best. Now, I would also say, check this out, if you, if you like the look of this, then go to www.asweare.space to check out our merchandise. So we've taken the bus all the way from Westerplatte in the rain to the Solidarity Museum. Now this is a pretty epic building and this is inspired by the dockyards of Gdansk. I spoke about the two key historical moments in the 20th century. The first we've explained the Westerplatte and the start of World War II, but now in 1980, this was the lead up to the end of communism and the Soviet reign. So this is how much the Soviets controlled after World War II. You've got the Iron Curtain that runs all the way down Europe. Now obviously a lot of people thought that World War II was awful and what the Nazi Germans did, but a lot of Poles thought that being under Soviet regime was worse. So in 1980, under the instruction of Lech Wałęsa, there was a strike in Lenin's dockyard that started it all. If you had an independent view during this time, the Soviets would put you in this room and interrogate you, interview, whichever way you want to call it, for hours on end. And this was their way of keeping you in line.
The display behind me is showing the incompetent economic policy of the colonists. So quite often they would have butchers with nothing on the shelves, people queuing outside the shops for hours before products were there because so few products were readily available. Things like meat and sweets were not common items and not easy to get hold of at all. So after years of Soviet control in Poland, the people and the workers had had enough. So on the 14th of August 1918, there was their demands placed on the excavator and there Lech Wałęsa, he read out those demands and that was the start of the sit-down protest that really kicked it all off. In the days after it began, the strike here, other factories around the country began to follow suit and it became a countrywide strike with everyone upset with the Soviet rule. As telephone signals to the shipyard had been cut off and nothing could be published on the TV or on the radio about this because of the sensitivity of the information, the workers decided to get their point across. They would publish all of their demands on boards and these were put on the gate. And these are the original boards. The map is highlighting the spread of the strike over time and how quickly and rapidly it popped up across the country and spread. At the climax of the strikes, over a thousand different workforces had all united together, all under the same person, leading for the same changes. In 1981, the president of the communists in Poland brought in martial law, which brought the military onto the streets of Poland. He blamed the economic crisis in Poland on the Solidarity Party. The arrest from martial law started really early. They started on the 12th of December, hours after the law was put in place. And in total, throughout the Solidarity Movement, over 10,000 people were imprisoned. At the beginning of martial law, a lot of workplaces continued to strike, but these strikes weren't dealt with well by the government. They did not want to sit down and have talks, so instead they sent the army in. This installation represents the gates, gates number two, which were the sign of solidarity. On the 16th of December at the Gdansk shipyard, the military went in with their armoured tanks and destroyed the gates to stop people striking. So as the 80s rolled on, the Soviet bloc was crumbling and the People's Republic of Poland realised that they were not getting the support from Moscow anymore. So they tried to appease the people of Poland by releasing some pr prisoners. So in 1986, prisoners such as Lech Wałęsa were freed. In 1989, after all the repression Poland and the Solidarity Movement had, there was a round table talk between the communist government and the solidarity movement, including some religion as well. And that led to a semi-free election that the solidarity movement won in a landslide. <laughs> Czy to byłby autentyczny, 
reprezentantem klasy pracującej. Deklarowano obecnie gotowość do demokratyzacji życia politycznego prowadzić będzie do zmian w funkcjonowaniu tej instytucji. Ja to konieczność widzę i po prostu mam Nie może się nie powiedzieć. Bo jeśli się nie powiecie, muszę to prowadzić. Muszę to prowadzić, bo naprawdę to jest tylko jedna ewentualność. Nie ma innej ewentualności. zagadnienie wydawnictw określanych jako niezależne lub poza zasięgiem cenzury. Co ja potwierdzam z pełnym poczuciem odpowiedzialności za sprawę. Działalność cenzury powinna służyć najniezbędniejszym interesom państwa i życia społeczno-politycznego. Zasięgiem cenzury jest tylko deklaracją szlachetnych intencji, a ustawy następnie wprowadzane w uso z tą konstytucją, to ta konstytucja jest tam Przepraszam za określenie, że to jest świstek The Solidarity Movement was a profound influence on the collapse of the Soviet Union in Central and Eastern Europe. Solidarity today is not only known for its trade union, but its significant force for political change. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Polish history. It's history that really connects the rest of the world with Poland. I would say so. And make sure you stick around because we've got loads more vlogs. Uh, we've got more vlogs in Poland and around the world. And while you're here, go down, hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss a video. And we will catch you next time. Bye.